And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Heimer Ezreal. Uh, we're going to be trying a, a new deck with Tribeam and Probulator. We got lots of good three mana cards in our regions here with Freljord and PNZ. Of course, Flash of Brilliance is going to be great for a Heimerdinger deck. And then, you know, you have like your Ezreal and then other good um, units there with Avros and Trapper, Kylie Tavern Keeper. Lot, so we got a good amount of threes. And so we're going to try Tribeam and Probulator with that. Uh, let's see. Lots of good removal, though. Thermogenic Beam, Mystic Shot, um, Aftershock, being able to blow up those landmarks or deal three damage to anything uh, to go along with the Tribeam and Probulator. We're, of course, going to be a Feel the Rush deck as well. Um, this is just a, one of like the very best finishing spells for a control deck like this. But both of our champions can definitely take over the game, whether it's you know Ezreal creating these fleeting Mystic Shots and just mowing everything down, or in the late game, finishing the, finishing the game out with the different Nexus damage that Ezreal can do. And so Aftershock can do Nexus damage as well, and then of course our other Mystic Shots. So we have like a, a little bit of a burn aspect to our deck to be able to finish out games. I'm pretty excited about it. I think this could uh, do pretty well. So let's go ahead and get to our games. Let's see how it does. Heimer Ezreal. We're going to go play five games in ranked. All right, the popular deck right now. Twist of Faith is. All right, so Sentry. I mean, I like Sentry Trapper Aftershock. So I'm going to keep that. But, you know, I don't know if, like, Sentry's really going to be dying with them having a bunch of elusives and everything. We have to have ways to be able to kill Twisted Fate. So right now, our Aftershock is one. It, a card like Mystic Shot or Thermogenic Beam wouldn't be bad either. All right, no Fizz. Okay, there's the Mystic Shot. I'll make that trade. Trading a two drop for a one drop, but we do also draw a card. I like our hand. I like what our hand looks like. Got these different threes. And the, the trappers are just really nice because getting those enraged yetis, it makes it easier to double spell in the mid game. Being able to play like Enraged Yeti plus something else, you know, plus a, re a removal spell in the same turn. Hmm. Pretty smart going and getting that 4 4. Ooh, got another donation deck redeemed here. What kind of what kind of donation deck is it? Is it um, meme tier deck, rank deck, and uh, you know what kind of champs and stuff. Can't afford to let Twisted Fate level up. Zoe Vi Ezreal. Cool. Um, so I think I want to go the Tribeam and Probulator deal four to this. So I'm going to go Flash of Brilliance. Make that four. Now do this. And then I still have the Enraged Yeti as well. So let's talk about how like we get to double spell in the mid game. Bannerman. <laughs> I guess you... I guess at four slot you have all the allegiance cards but still just you know looking at their little one one and one three that's not easy to deal with all this that we have here and i'm gonna cast this before they go like twisted fate gold card you know i know it could enrage yeti also but i'm, I'm just gonna attack i'm just gonna attack i know right i can't believe we missed the allegiance we're so unlucky This is something I like about the deck that we're playing. I think our deck's pretty flexible. 
Ellen was talking about flexible game plans. Yeah, I think we got a good flexible game plan here also. Aurora Porealis could be like pretty awesome. Maybe I should just cast the Porealis mana wise this past turn. I know, right? My opponent just really likes our deck with with this. So yeah, they they should have both enraged enraged yetis, especially with that big a card. They're gonna so they'll have both of them. I want to kill this spray pen. I guess I guess I probably should have played this Plunder Poro. Yeah, I should have. I should I should have played the Plunder Poro. You can't do this. Yeah, I should have played that. So basically, what I was worried about is I I didn't is like I was worried about playing both Poro. Like if, so, basically, here's here's the thing. If I played P Plunder Poro, then I couldn't play both Poro Snacks and still have Field of Rush available for the next turn. Now I can play both Poro Snacks. Get this thing to be a 5-5. Five, five. I still I have exactly enough mana for Feel the Rush next turn. And that's gonna be my plan. But if I would have played the, the Plunder Poro, I would have put more pressure on them of just like play Plunder. Plunder Poro last turn, then I have an, an additional 3-3 three, three attacking here, and the ability to maybe have Aftershock kill them. Who says I don't share? They walked around. Like a fish in water. All right, Twisted Fate, please don't level up. And please don't kill me with a whole bunch of elusives. And I'm kind of, you know, this is my one vulnerable turn. If, if they, we know that they've already used two iterative improvement, but if they do just go really wide with verbal fishes, this is my one vulnerable turn. Hopefully that's it, no more verbal fishes. another one of those. So they're out of iterative improvements. That's the good news. Can't have any more of those. No sweat. So Twisted Fate's at four. already played a couple of rummages. They've played two, hopefully not another. That's what they need to level up to a fate right now, so really hoping they don't have the third. Okay, good. 
Very important getting that thing out of here, not letting it uh, level up. Harsh Winds makes an elusive, but I think I'd rather, you know, Tavern Keeper and mm, maybe Flash Freeze, maybe just Plunder Poro. Never lost a fair game or played one. Well, this is bad. Eyes open. That's the third Twisted Fate. I'd like to have Kylie Tavern here he heal the Ezreal, but I also kind of need to heal my Nexus. I, I do really need to worry about my Nexus. I think I'm going to worry about the Nexus. Leave your tracks in the door. Flesh was weak, but look at me now. Why are you here? Could have flash freezed. That's a good draw. To keep Ezreal's health a little bit higher. But by by not flash freezing, I, I have more options. And I'd, I'd rather flash freeze like whenever they are attacking anyway. It's kind of in general. Um. Alright, so I'm not gonna not gonna do another field of rush. I'd like to set that up for next turn. Another feel the rush. It's smaller than a diagram. So where are you at? You're at six out of twelve. Hey John Santos, welcome. Welcome from over from YouTube. Awesome. Glad to have you here on Twitch. Yeah, uh, feel free to you know talk and chat and everything. Got any questions, comments, lines, be like, anything like that. I love uh, hearing from y'all in chat. So I, I either just cast this progress day right now and get a big 9-9 or go for Feel the Rush the next turn and... No, let's just get a big 9-9. Nine -nine. I guess it'll be an 8-8. Eight -eight. It'll level up my Hybridinger, but it'll be an 8-8. Eight -eight. I think that's good. And then we we'll get a bunch more cards. We probably don't need to feel the rush again this game. Cool. I like having all these extra cards. Give me the ability to play a lot of spells in a turn. So I feel pretty good about where we're at here. We've killed all three Twisted Fates. We haven't seen any Fizzes yet. We've gotten through a bunch of iterative improvements. Um, okay. Yeah, I like where we were there. Calculated. Calculated. Okay, Diana and Zoe. Another deck with uh, cheaper champions that are really powerful that you gotta be able to kill right away. Okay, so Zoe, Diana. So I like... So basically turn one Zoe's gonna be a problem, but I, I like a lot of these cards, but maybe I have to mulligan like Heimerdinger. That's, that feels so weird mulliganing Heimerdinger, but maybe we have to mulligan... I guess we can maybe mulligan Aftershock. Look for cheaper cards to deal with turn one Zoe. I wouldn't exactly say that those are cheaper cards. There we go. That's the card. Mystic Shot. That's the card that can deal with Zoe. Super cool star char. It's all super and cool. Star and chart. 
And we get Heimerdinger back anyway. Alright, let's get another three mana card or two. You know, a good flash of brilliance. Alright, so this is like an all-out invoke deck. As far as Shadow Isles goes, I've seen people just play Atrocity. Their plan, I think that may be what my opponent's doing. Their plan is just to invoke a whole bunch and get some big invoke mess and then Atrocity that. Just a little something I like to call fun. Promise of a new moon upon you, Bloom Tender. Ugh, you're still painting everything? Maybe you'd like it if you weren't so busy being mean. Yeah, stop being mean. Alright, so basically Pale Cascade is why I didn't want to just shoot the Starry Scamp. But yeah, I, I assume that they had Pale Cascade and they're going to use it on Diana, and then we'll have Troll Chance protect. And I'm going to just keep the three spell mana, I think, to go along with Heimer and take this three damage. Keep Mystic Shot. Keep my other Mystic Shot for more important things. Flash of Brilliance. Ooh, Ezreal. Okay, so I could just play Ezreal instead of Heimer. That would help out Tribeam and Probulator. Um, no, it's it's play Heimer. Oh, sweet smell of science. This is not going to be easy beating a deck that's this dedicated to invoking. Invoke is really good. Was that a glimmer of starlight I saw? Energy signatures of your archaeological instrument indescribable. So of course playing the Ezreal to turn on the uh turn on three damage for that thing. Over there. Alright, and maybe we can bait out another pill cascade. Sure! Or like some kind, you know, maybe some kind of protection. That's what I was thinking. Their hand has to just be all invoke cards, right? They have like... Okay, so that was the super cool star chart. So they have the Behold the Infinite and two Lunari Priestess. Though we haven't seen what any of those cards are yet. <laughs> What's up, Jaw Hunters? Man, talk about one card. One card... Killed their thing, made a Jaw Hunter's Challenger, and made a Beast Below, and made a Storm Lover. Just that is crazy value from one card. One shot, all skill. That is all skill. Um, of course, I need to I need to clear up some room. On the trail. But I don't know if I challenge with the Jaw Hunters. I guess I do. I guess I do. I want to need to clear up space. These stories were true. So they're at ten. And what are you at? You're at four. Alright, so the Ezreal's at 5. If I play the Tribeam and Probulator, I'm gonna, you know, run out of room. I won't play... I won't have, like, this This turret won't really be able to be played. But that will level up my Ezreal. And it will level up Heimer. It'll level up both of them. And so it's basically... I could do... I could level up both of them with either of these. Um, the, it's just the Aftershock can, can go upstairs... And do the three damage up there. But the tri beam can't. So yeah, I guess I guess I'm gonna do this. I'm so good, I surprised myself. A sturdy construction.
All right, so they're both leveled up. Um, I'm kind of wasting a unit there, but I, I feel like with having the Heimerdinger, the units aren't going to be a problem. The Harsh Winds is just a wonderful draw, because that's a, a draw step that's going to uh, really protect against... Um, really protect against Atrocity. Tread carefully. Gives me a 7. But of course, them being at 1. See what we got. There we go. And our deck's looking good. 2 0 and very impressive wins. Okay, another invoke deck. This one with Demacia, so they're going to be playing, you know, the Grand Plaza. So I definitely want Aftershock for the Grand Plaza. I'm gonna mulligan the mulligan the twelve drop of force. Jovan, Twitch Prime sub, thank you so much for that support. I appreciate that. Welcome to the channel, brand new Twitch Prime sub. Y'all get some hype votes in the chat. All right. Unfortunately, they had the turn one Zoe, which is always the worst thing you can see. Can give me good use of these two. And now I have Aftershock for the next turn. Um, and I'm not going to play the Sentry. So next turn, I'm going to have six... I'll have six total mana. Let's see. Oh, because I'll have four, then plus two. Oh, so I, actually, I won't be able to... Okay, so I guess I will play the Sentry. Nothing escapes me. I was thinking I could do Trapper plus Aftershock next turn, but no, I'd, I'd have six total. That'd cost seven, of course. In Avarosa's name. Yeah, so I went with the sentry so I could open attack. I guess they could single combat now because they got that bonus. So, so far so good, but I don't have either of my champions. The strength of the sun really no top end card at all. And uh, if they, so if they have like, you know, just a really in soul, it, even though it's been going good for me so far, if they just have a really in soul, that's going to be difficult. Hmm. Oh, Thing is, I want Avaros and Sentry to die. I know I could use Troll Chant to save it, but I actually want it to die. Yeah, so I think I'm, I'm actually just going to hold on to all this. I just want to keep Mystic Shot for Zoe also. I should probably... Maybe I should do that next turn and have... Okay, good, cool. Actually, they don't have single combat right there. Yay, Ezreal. No, not a Grand Plaza. That is not good. That is not good. Awesome. Sharp Sight also would have been not good. Alright, 
there's number three. Wow. What is their hand? Like, what do they expect me to play here? What is their hand? I mean, they only have five cards and I have seven. Their hand could just be Aurelian Souls, right? Like, so th the more that I... So, like, that's kind of the... Pro like, while this is a good pass for me, just, you know, if you look at this individual turn, this is it's good for me to pass and take the pass. But the problem is, is if they're just sitting on, like, two Aurelian Souls... And they're like we just get them closer to a really and so that could be a problem. Speed things up a little. Okay. So I wanted to play that just to see what what we got if we got something good to play, but unfortunately we did not get anything good to play. These old eyes still see far and clear. Um, we may need to be, you know, may need to use like a Harsh Winds, Winter's Breath combo to take down an Aurelian Soul that costs 13 mana. And we'd already have to have a Spell Shield gone before that. So Troll Chant is 5 and 4. Harsh Winds is safer. But there's so much more mana. I don't really want to play Harsh Winds. Again, I just want Sentry to be dead. I just I want to draw a different card. I was worried if they'd have that. Ezreal's leveled up. I again just I wanted Sentry to die. Shining gifts from the sky. I'm probably gonna need to uh, harsh winds that thing. Yeah, I guess I'm going to have to do that. Cool. Makes my harsh ones a little better. This thing's going to be a 5-2. Yeah, they'll be able to create a gem, but... Alright, so open attack or not. If their plan is Aurelian Soul, which I think is a very likely plan... I think it's better to go wide and not open attack against Aurelian Soul. All right, I should still get the other follower. Oh, wow. So that's 11. There are one drops that do... There are three ones. I don't think they have a card they can play right now. I pass immediately. It's highly unlikely, but also, like, what else is this Tribune and Probulator really going to do? Right? So, like, I think... I think you just might as well go for it. Oh. 
Not a 3-1. Pop a Spell Shield? I guess, yeah, I guess that's what it could do, is pop a Spell Shield. Oh, a Star Shaping. That's bad. Yeah, I guess it could have popped a Spell Shield. I went for it, thinking they didn't have anything, but they did have something. Oh, come on. I guess we wouldn't really do damage to that thing anyway. <laughs> this stories were but. true. I was going to say, are they not going to use the gem? So, yep, I would have been able to pop the Spell Shield if I would have kept that. And then I could, you know, pop Spell Shield and use Harsh Winds. So. Did not work out for me. That was a perfect gain five, go grab a great beyond. That was a perfect card. All right, Heimerdinger, we haven't seen you yet. We need you. Where you at, Heimerdinger? I just have millions of invoke cards over here. Gotta use one of them. The problem with playing Trapper at, at this point of the game is that, you know, we do put the one mana 5-5 five five on top, but the one mana 5-5 five five isn't really, like, one of my better draws. Like, that that wouldn't be a very, a very good draw right now. That's too bad. It was looking like we were going to get there. But no. They got... They got to their top end before I got to mine. My, how they stare. They had a couple of real good top decks in there. The the single combat one to, to take down like my Ezreal. All right, another Zoe deck. All right, I like this opener against Zoe with Mystic Shot, Ezreal, Troll Chant. Um, as far as Draven goes, I'm not sure. I We did mulligan the Feel the Rush the last time, and I think I'm going to mulligan it again, but that was a card that I would have loved to have access to later, but it, it's difficult to keep it in the opener. So this time we found all of our top end. Double Heimerdinger, Feel the Rush. Hopefully we can stay alive long enough. Time for the main event. So yeah, I wanted to keep them from playing that last turn with the three mana that have them waste that. Do I just go double Mystic Shot? Or do I take three? Constellation. Sun this, moon that, adults are boring. But 
you're pretty to paint. I know you're thinking and stuff, but could you maybe speed things up a little? Sure. Alright, so I... I'm gonna just go ahead and use the two Mystic Shots and kill the, uh, the Draven. And so this leaves me with three... So basically, this leaves me with three mana next turn. That's gonna fizzle in Ezreal's Mystic Shot, too. So one that that's another Ezreal out of the deck. You suck. So I guess that's their that was the reason to, for me to cast both Mystic Shots at the same time. I guess the yeah. Uh, Stop bragging if you could back it up. So if we didn't have to use that troll chant, I was going to be able to go Heimerdinger with the Mystic Shot this turn. I'm gonna save. I know I could go Flash of Brilliance and make that thing three, but I just want to save the Flash of Brilliance for Heimer. Cool. Gravity. Which side was upside again? Whichever way the paint drips, Zoe. We can certainly assume they're going to attack. They're definitely attacking. But I thought by, by keeping my mana open, it, it does make it a little bit more scary for them to attack with the Zoe, which is what I didn't want them to do. So, uh, how do you get that kind of volume in your hair? Electrical currents and aging safety equipment, my boy. And fire! Um, the... What's... What's the seven mana? Deal, deal three, deal two, deal one? That's the card that I'd like. Okay, those aren't exactly it. Yes, yes, again. Um. So now I can I can cast zero mana thermogenic beam and make a one two challenger. And the one two so the one two challenger could kill the Zoe. Um and that will get me five out of six for Ezreal level up. Either that or I just keep the thorny toad and hold on to thermogenic beam. I don't really need to keep the thorny toad. True Shot Barrage. There we go. Yeah, that was the one I was thinking of, was True Shot Barrage. Life's a lot better when you can draw Heimerdinger, though, isn't it? It's a lot better when you can draw Heimerdinger. No, True Shot Barrage is PNZ. My very safest play is Harsh Winds. I know you're thinking and stuff. Which I do have like infinite cards, so I, I guess I can go with the safest play. They don't know what they're up against.
Okay, stun that. Give them all plus two, plus zero this round. So I take two. I can either kill the Zoe or I can just kill the Spiderling. No, I just... I'll just let this happen and just... So I, I take two, go to ten. Yeah, I think they're like trying to, you know, emote a bunch and trying to get me to think that I, that the game was over, that I had won the game, and trying to get me to not block very much and all that kind of stuff. All right, there we go. That'll do. Truly remarkable. Three and one. No, no Howling Abyss in this deck. Um, I don't think our deck is weak to aggro, no. I don't know, like we have we have good early removal. I guess it depends on like what kind of aggro, but we, we do have good early removal. And we have some Nexus healing. I mean, so I guess it, it depends, but as you saw, like that Draven, or that Draven Zoe we just played against, that's a very aggro deck, and and uh, you know we handled that one pretty well. Sedwani so Brom. I would I would rather play against the small unit aggro with having Mystic Shots and all that kind of stuff than like the big overwhelm aggro. Like I think the big overwhelm aggro, if that's what this is, this could be a lot more difficult. And, you know, we have, like, some good blockers, the Avros and Sentry, the Avros and Trapper, against the smaller aggro. But big Overwhelm aggro, PNZ doesn't really match up against big Overwhelm aggro. So I think, you know, like your Sejuani Battle Fury decks, they're not very popular, but I do think that that could be one of the worst matchups for this deck. All right, we're going to try to stay alive until turn 9 and get a couple of 10-10s. Ten and hope a couple of 10-10s ten can finish this out. I thought you'd never ask. Hot on the trail. Nailed it. This will take the chill off. I thought about just passing and not doing anything. If I would have passed, I would have had two extra mana. They would have the same amount of mana, and they would be at 20 and not have that 3-3 in play. I really hope they don't have Culling Strike, but, you know, like, the Ezreal's weak to Culling Strike also. Safety equipment, my boy, for the Empire. Oh, you're welcome, Mind Splitter. Glad you've been enjoying the Hymer Abyss with Vi. Cool. This, so this is, yeah, this is a very similar deck. You know, not, you know, instead of having Vi, we got Ezreal, and, and no, instead of, basically, instead of being an Abyss deck, we're a Tribeam and Populator deck. That's kind of the main differences with the two. Ice Quake. Scar Grounds. Scar Grounds. Watch and learn. Let's talk about your dad. A god to meet bigger than you. Ooh, that's gotta hurt. Where am I at? I'm only at two. If I if I shoot the demolitionist, it turns into a three-one. I can just go upstairs. Firing. A three-one tough. Fire knows its own. Mm. It's smaller than a diagram. 
crab. Seize what's ours, War Mother. You're just in time. That's the kind of card that I'm more scared of. So I have 10 mana, so that's 3, 6, 10. So I can do all, all of these. I'm probably layer Flash Freeze and Tavern Keeper. Warm hearts and hot food. Born for conquest. Blast them. Clear it out. Let's talk about your stand. So it's five damage now. Not enough to kill Sejuani. Do I keep the Ember Maiden alive? No, I don't keep the Ember Maiden alive. Because it kills my turrets and everything. All right, cool. We didn't get to see what kind of cool five drop we would get. But I was I was considering keeping their Ember Maiden alive for just like their Nexus, right? Like their Nexus being at ten, it would do a damage, put it down to nine, and then you know, seeing if that would make sense for us. But no, I don't think that would have made that much sense. So our deck looked really, really strong. I know we did lose a game to Aurelian Soul, and that was a game that I had no feel the rush, no Heimerdinger, and um still I thought that we were gonna be winning that game. They had um a really nice top decked uh single combat which I'm pretty sure it was a top deck single combat. I could be wrong, but I think it was because they didn't play it before. Um, but that, that took down um, an Ezreal at the wrong time. But we were, we were close to winning that, but yeah, I didn't have Field of Rush or Heimer at the top end for that one. And then and then I made a you know then I made a, a mistake with my Tribeam and Probulator also. I tried maybe going for Lethal, but they had that great star shaping, right? That, um, that I, I wish I would have saved it for to pop a Spell Shield. So, uh, I, I don't know, but even if I would have saved at that point, I don't, even if I would have saved it, it would have been pretty difficult to win, but it would have been better than not having it. All right, but anyway, um, yeah, Heimer Ezreal looked really strong and just very flexible of, uh, you know, like we're a control deck, but we can also put out a pretty good mid range slash aggro kind of deck, right? Having Sentry and Trapper, and Trapper is a big part of that. Um, getting Trapper and Enraged Yetis and stuff. We can put some good amount of pressure on them early and have some units that are kind of difficult to kill with one mana 5-5s five and 3-3s three and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I think I think our deck looked pretty good. I think it did. This this one was is one that I would be pretty confident in ranking up and just continuing to play. Uh, I think this one is a, a really good deck. If you like Heimerdinger control decks... You know, give this a try. I, I like Heimerdinger was just amazing for us in all those games. There's some people that, that don't think that Heimerdinger is that good, but I just really disagree with those people. I think that Heimerdinger is still amazing, and um, yeah, just getting all those turrets and stuff was just winning us a bunch of games. The Flash of Brilliance was great with Heimerdinger, and also great with Tribeam and Probulator. Um, so yeah, we were a pretty good Improbulator deck, having the nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 threes. That worked out really well. Um, I really like Harsh Winds, but I could, and like Harsh Winds is two targets for Ezreal, which is also, uh, important and everything, but I could see if you want, if you want to play a third Flash Freeze and two Harsh Winds, right, if you want to switch up those numbers, I don't, I mean, I think it's, I think it's good either way, whichever way you want to go. A third Flash Freeze, um, would help out Improbulator just a little bit, so if you want to do that, you can, but, um, but there we go. All right, so that's Heimer Ezreal. So those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And of course, feel free to leave those comments. If you try this deck out, let me know how it goes. Let me know how uh, how you like this uh, Heimerdinger Ezreal deck and, and uh, you know, yeah, all that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm excited about this one. And so you would love to hear uh, the feedback from y'all on YouTube to try it out. All right, but that's all I got here for Heimer Ezreal. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you for the next video.